Hi, I am Brianna. I'm a primate keeper here at the Houston Zoo. And we're here today at our white cheek gibbon exhibit, and we're gonna hang out a little bit with Max and Ting. So they're really easy to tell apart. Uh, Max is the black one, and Ting is the lighter one. All adult males have that black coloration, and they have those uh, white tufts of hair on the sides of their faces. That's where they get the name white cheek gibbon. The females are gonna be a cream color or tan, uh, light brown, or even have a little bit of a reddish tint. So Max, he is uh, seven and a half, um, almost eight. Uh, and Ting is six and a half. Max has been here for about three years. Uh, he used to live here with his brother, Murray. Uh, Mur Murray recently uh, left and uh, went to another zoo to start his own family. Uh, and then we got Ting. So Ting has been here for a couple of months. Uh, when we introduce animals, uh, we start out really slowly. We want to make sure that we're seeing a lot of positive signs from them. Uh, so first we do a visual, which is just what it sounds like. Uh, we just let them see each other. If things are looking good, we'll do what's called a howdy. And that's where they can uh, see each other and maybe touch each other through a barrier. And again, if things are going really well, we'll open up the door and we will see what happens. Uh, so Ting from the get go, she decided that Max was pretty cool. Uh, she started doing these really uh, jerky behaviors, um, which is affiliative. That means that she really likes him. Um, and Max took a little bit longer to warm up to her. Uh, but after a couple of weeks, he decided she wasn't too bad. Um, and now they're pretty much inseparable. Um, as you can see, they are lounging in the hammock right now. Hammocks are one of Ting's favorite things. Um, they'll play together, they'll groom, um, and they're pretty much together all the time. So I was talking about their hair color when I first introduced them. So one really cool thing is that all of the babies, they are born as the same color as their mom. And this is so they blend in with mom so that they are harder for predators to see. When they get a little bit older, both boys and girls will turn black. And that's so as they start to move around and explore their environment, they're gonna blend in with the trees. And then the females will do one more change. When they start to reach maturity, uh, the females will turn to their adult coloration so Ting, she uh, changed back over to this blonde color uh, not too long ago, um, probably within the last six months to a year. Uh, one really cool thing about gibbons is that they sing. So we have about 17 species of gibbons in the world. Uh, they all have a unique song um, and both males and females sing different parts. So they actually make a duet. We have two species of gibbons here at the zoo. We have these white cheek gibbons and we have siamangs. Uh, they both have different songs, um, but they have the same purpose, which is to uh, announce their territory and let other gibbons know where they are and that they're defending their territory. So the white cheek gibbons, they are uh, dawn singers, so they will sing right after the sun comes up. Uh, the Siamangs are less predictable, but they'll start kind of mid-morning, and then the white cheek gibbons, they will respond. Uh, so they are uh, making sure that each knows where their home is. Singing is also important as a pair bonding activity. Uh, so uh, gibbons that have a more cohesive song, it suggests that they might have a stronger social bond. Uh, but no two gibbons have the same exact song. Um, if you listen to another pair of white cheek gibbons, it would sound just the tiniest bit different. It would have the same melody, but it would, uh, it would have very slight differences. So Denise asks, what do they eat? Uh, here at the zoo, they get a wide variety of fruits and vegetables. We try to use uh, some more seasonal things so that uh, they can eat uh, local and eat fresh foods. 
Um, they also really like uh, lettuce. Romaine is one of their favorites. Um, in the wild, uh, gibbons eat a large amount of fruit and figs actually make up a, at least a quarter of their diet. Um, they do get some figs here at the zoo. It tends to be a little more of a treat, um, but they enjoy a lot of their sweet foods um, and they really like nuts and, uh, and seeds. Uh, so as you have watched the gibbons move around their exhibit, they are doing what's called brachiation. Uh, so if you guys have ever been on the monkey bars, it's that uh, hand over hand motion as, uh, as you would go from one bar to the next. Uh, so that is their specialty. Uh, they have a really flexible shoulder joint and really, really long fingers that act as a hook um, so that they can really grip onto the branches they're moving along. Uh, so, <laughs> uh, so Ting is being a little bit of a flirt. Um, but the good thing is they really like each other. <laughs> so Christy asks, uh, how big do they get? Um, so these guys are both full grown adults. Uh, they tend to be uh, 10 to 15 pounds. Um, and uh, Max is about um, 12 pounds and Ting is about 10. Um, but as you can see, their arms are super long. Um, like I talked with brachiation, um, that really helps with that movement. Their arms are uh, much longer than their uh, legs and about as long as they are tall. So if they were to walk with their hands down, their fingers would probably be able to touch the ground. So Robert asks, what is their gestation period? That's a great question. Uh, so their gestation period is about seven months. Um, and so uh, uh, gibbons are what are called lesser apes. So uh, they are uh, relatively closely related to the great apes. So humans, gorillas, chimpanzees, bonobos, and orangutans. Um, all of the great apes have a gestation around eight to nine months. Um, so these white cheek gibbons are just a little bit less than that. Um, a female can have offspring about every two to three years. Uh, they are weaned after about uh, one year uh, and they're considered relatively independent by uh, three to four years old, but they'll stay with the, their family uh, for about eight to nine years total. Lauren asks, how can you help save these animals in the wild? That's a great question. Uh, so unfortunately, white cheek gibbons are considered critically endangered, which means they are at risk of becoming extinct in the wild. Uh, currently, their population is mostly in Laos and Vietnam, uh, but they are really at risk due to deforestation, uh, and that is for uh, the use of timber and to use the land. So one thing that you can do to help gibbons and any animals that live in forests is to recycle paper. Um, so you can buy recycled paper products, you can um, not get receipts or ask for your receipts to be emailed, you can uh, ask to opt out of junk mail, um, just anything that you can do to help reduce your uh, use of paper. And Laura asks, are they apes or monkeys and what is the difference? So that's a great question. These are apes. They are what's called a lesser ape. The major difference between apes and monkeys are that monkeys have tails and apes do not. So if you see a primate with a tail, it is a monkey. Um, so they both have very unique personalities. Uh, Max is, um, he's very sweet uh, and curious, uh, but Ting is uh, incredibly curious. She always wants to know what you're doing. Uh, she'll watch as you move around. Um, she also will uh, toss food that she's holding. So if she's holding a piece of food, she'll toss it up into the air and then she'll eat it. Um, I once watched her throw a, 
a quarter head of cabbage about five, six feet in the air and then catch it, which was pretty cool. Um, she is also a lot more playful. She will initiate a lot of the playing bouts with Max. Um, she loves to leap off of different props and catch on to things as she falls. She likes to roll around in the hammock. Um, and she's a really great addition. We're, re we're really excited to have her here at the zoo. Uh, so another uh, cool thing that um, all primates do is grooming. So grooming is uh, both a social function or has a social function and it also um, helps keep them clean. So they take baths like we do. Um, so the way that they stay clean is they pick through their hair and they'll pick off uh, dirt and bugs, parasites, dry skin, uh, anything like that. And they can groom themselves, but they'll also groom with each other. So Max and Tang will groom together um, and this will also cement their social bond and it will make them better friends. So Ting here has found a stick, um, which she <laughs> has decided that she is done with. Um, but she'll do that. She'll uh, she'll pick up different things, and sometimes she'll toss them around uh, and play with them, which is really cute. Uh, Robert asks, "Are they friendly with keepers? Is there contact between them?" Uh, that's another great question. Um, so we are what's called protected contact, which means we're never in the same space as them. Um, they've got some pretty big canines. Um, so, yeah, they are pretty friendly with us, but um, that doesn't mean that they want us in their space. Uh, so we always have a barrier in between us, and we always watch their behavior. Uh, so if they are kind of grumpy or they're showing that they don't really want us near them, uh, then we won't attempt to make any contact with them because they could grab at us. Um, and their hands and their arms, as you can see, as they're moving around, they're incredibly strong. Um, so they're, they're relatively small, but they're very strong. Uh, and Emma asked, what is their favorite enrichment? Um, anything with food. Uh, they're incredibly food motivated, so they really enjoy food puzzles. Um, so if we give them uh, a forage pile, for example, uh, we might have a pile of beta chips or pine shavings. We'll hide some little treats in there like currants uh, or sunflower seeds. Uh, and they will spend a lot of time going through that and trying to find every little piece of food in there. Uh, we also give them uh, food puzzles like uh, cup feeders or um, balls with holes in them. And they'll have to manipulate them in order to get the treats out. So thanks for tuning in. Uh, join us next Wednesday at 11 a.m. for our next Facebook Live.